Well, John, January 20th, 2023, around 8 a.m. was when you turned up to Fratton Park, I think. What are your memories of that day? Uh, it was a bit of a whirlwind, to be honest. Uh, the most sort of pressing thing on my mind was the fact we had the Exeter game the next day. So I, I thought, right, first of all, I've got to pick a team and go and take training. Um, but that came along with all the immediate commitments and, and meeting the staff, meeting all the players. And so, yeah, you can probably imagine everything all happened all at once. I didn't have too much time to think. Um, I, I do remember um, getting into Fratton Park, doing the photo shoot, coming down here, addressing the team, um, taking training. I think out of my trainers, I didn't have a pair of boots at that time, um, which was interesting. And then, yeah, back to Fratton Park for just media, um, media and more media for the rest of the day. Um, I, I think I remember getting into the hotel room late at night and, um, yeah, been a bit exhausted but excited for the next day. What was going through your mind when you when you got back to your hotel room that night after a really, really full-on day? I think I managed to just switch focus at that point to the game and I'd had so little time to, to really think about anything else. Uh, it, it was quite useful, it just it was thrown straight in, i.e. We, we had that game, it was a really, you know, really significant game at the time, we were 15th, hadn't picked up um, too many points over the previous few games and yeah, I think it was really important for a lot of reasons that we, we got off uh, the mark and, and started that sort of, um, you know, the, the new tenure as head coach really well and, and thankfully we did. And, and when, I, yeah, when my head hit the pillow there, it was just thinking about what it was going to be like the next day and um, yeah, that, that was probably the only thing I could think about at that point. Get much sleep? I think I did actually, I was knackered. So yeah, I got a bit of sleep. Everything over the last, you know, the previous 48 hours had, uh, had happened so quickly and there'd been so much to do, including that Friday where there was just everything um, that we, we had to get through, including all of the, the media and the announcements. But yeah, I was, um, I was pretty knackered. I look back at the photos even and think, yeah, I wasn't looking at my best. So uh, yeah, got a, got a good sleep and then was ready for the next day. You mentioned about the 48 hours just in that sort of process there. I want to take you back prior to that, to that day and, and speak about the process you had to go through was... Was that something you felt prepared for and confident that you could succeed in or was it a bit daunting or perhaps a bit of both? It was definitely daunting going in and speaking to a football club of, of Portsmouth size and you know speaking to you know executives and a director of football with a huge amount of experience and knowing exactly what they were doing and, and ultimately I didn't know if I, you know I hadn't interviewed for any jobs before and I, I didn't know if um, anything that I was saying was was of any use I didn't know how my presentation would come across but I, I did everything that I thought was you know going to be true to how I was going to try and do the role if I actually got it and, and just tried to be as authentic as possible I suppose and um, yeah so it was it wasn't it wasn't easy it was really nerve-wracking um, it was it was you know extremely uh, extremely daunting I think is, is the right word um, but I think after it it's like like a lot of those things even before I'd been offered the job I thought I, I did really enjoy it it was a great experience a really really good experience and um, I think the, the fact I came out of it having enjoyed it having met the people that, that worked at the football club and were going to be responsible for making those big decisions I thought you know this is something I really want to do. And if you can tell us how and when did you find out that you you got the job? I think it was the I think it was the Wednesday evening, and um, Andy Cullen called me. It was really late at night, so it was about half ten uh, in the evening. We'd gone through um, I think the the fourth, third and fourth set of interviews that evening, and, and Andy called me, and I was down in my kitchen and um, just on my own. I remember he, he offered me the job, and uh, yeah, I, I don't really yeah. It was it was it was a bit strange at that point. Um, I thought you know I must be sort of down to maybe the last. Um, one or two. So the biggest surprise, honestly, for me was actually getting the call in the first place. Um, I was, you know, I was really um, surprised and shocked when that came. Um, and when I got to that point, I was just, you know, I was really hopeful, quietly hopeful that I'd get it. And and obviously just ecstatic that, um, that the, the offer was made. Who was the first person you told? Uh, I walked upstairs and told my wife. I left my phone downstairs and um, yeah, just walked up and, and told my wife. And it was it. It was a it was an interesting moment. It was a really surreal moment. Just sort of sat on the bed and thought, right, yeah, this is um, our lives are going to change now. We've we've got. I'm a completely different, um, completely different job. I went from being a player to head coach at Portsmouth. Um, a completely different role, obviously a different part of the country. Everything about it couldn't have, have been any um, farther removed from, from what I was doing at that point. So, um, yeah, we, we sort of had a bit of a, a laugh and thought we've got to get on with this. In terms of the club, how different are things now compared to when you first walked in? I think, yeah, there's, there's lots of things that we've tried to change for the better and we've tried to move things forward everywhere at the football club. Uh, one of the things that we, we really wanted to do was was look at improvements we could make around the, the training ground and a huge amount's been done there. We're going to hopefully move into the new building at the back end of the season but even in the building we're sitting in at the moment there's um, a lot of money been pumped into this, a lot of money's been pumped into the pitches just to make sure that we keep the standards as, as good as possible. Um, so we're really pleased that we've done that and, and there's there's a lot that we've invested in on the football side as well, the technology and, and hardware, just not particularly exciting things but things that are taking the club to the next level. 
um, revamped the, the staff as well. We've, we've got quite a few new staff members in for a couple of different departments. Uh, but yeah, the most important thing really was the progress that I think we've made on the, on the football pitch. And uh, yeah, a year on now, it, it was interesting because we, we got to the year anniversary at the weekend and when we were in the middle of a, you know, a, a run that we weren't particularly pleased with in terms of our form and results. So it, it was sort of mixed feelings. But overall, I thought the progress we made in the year was really good. In terms of the, the culture around the place, what do you think the reasons are for those improvements? Uh, you know, it's hard to it's hard to say. Uh, I think that the 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 culture that I was was left with in the dressing room I walked into um, from from Danny and Nicky was was by no means broken whatsoever. We had there was a really good squad with with decent enough team spirit. The lads were fit. Um, the lads were playing for each other. Um, and I think you know, uh, and, and everybody speaks really fondly about um, about the the. The, the Cowleys and, and quite rightly I think because what they, they did for the football club so uh, you know, there wasn't a, a huge amount I had to change um, straight away but it was just about being myself and about trying to introduce what I thought the best way to play football and go about our business every day was and, and for me just coming away from being a player a week ago uh, into the into you know, a completely different role I tried to keep everything player centric so I, I tried to keep it focused in terms of what the players would want to do how they'd want to train what they'd want to see um, in the analysis room what they want to hear on match days and that was where we focused really just to make it um, you know, player friendly make sure that they understood what their role was uh, and, and ultimately get them you know, back enjoying the game You mentioned your staff earlier how have you found working with your immediate team first of all with John Zesh and, uh, and Joe as well? Yeah, well, I mean, I had uh, Joe and Zesh the minute that I stepped into the building and they were, they were really important in terms of what we uh, were trying to achieve because I came in really um, sort of uh, fresh and, and, and obviously no experience from my end. And, um, you know, Joe immediately took on the role of uh, set pieces, brilliant goalkeeper coach as well, took a huge amount off my plate. And Zesh was brilliant in terms of the support that he gave, having been in the building for the interim period as well. And, you know, Zesh had stepped up only recently for the academy, so it was, it was quite a young... Um, I guess an experienced team at that point, but I think we got through it really well. And yeah, it was it was brilliant working with them and coming in with without sort of have, have a, having met either of them before. That was um, it was a real positive for me. So to be able to bring in John a couple of months later, I think really boosted us. The really good coach, and um, I've, I've known him for not a huge amount of time, but known him for long enough to to know that we'd get on and, and we'd work really well together. And yeah, thankfully the the relationship so far between the immediate coaching staff has been really good. And yeah, not to forget Dan, Eddie, all the interns, along with medical and, and sports science teams as well. How much do all of your staff contribute to the sort of general feel around the place, aside from what they do in sort of their day-to-day -day responsibilities? I think, yeah, the general feel around the place is incredibly positive. And I think if you, if you look at the, the contacts that players have with staff during the day, by the time I speak to the players either in here or out in the training pitch, they've, they've, spoken, to, they've spoken to the um, medical department or sport and exercise science department three, four, five times. They've been in the gym doing prehab. There's all sorts of things, so it's really important that I think they, they get on well with all of the staff there and, and also that there's, um, there's a bit of brightness and, and happiness about the way they go about their business. And, and I know that that's absolutely true and I don't have uh, to interfere in any of that. Those departments are, are really good um, in their own right. And um, I think there's, there's that part of it and making sure that players come in and they're happy and also making sure that the departments are, are really good at what they do and, and they are experts in their field. And that helps me. It means I don't have to worry about any of that. We've got um, you know, physios that know exactly what they're doing. Um, I don't have to worry a jot about anything that's going on in that department. Same in the um, sort of sport and exercise science department. Um, and, and the amount that I lean on all of those departments and, and, and the analysts and all the interns as well, it makes my job a lot easier. And in terms of keeping spirits high, I'm going to hazard a guess and say your weekly football tennis session to help with that as well. Yeah, we just try and yeah, we try and make sure once all the once all the work's done, we we, we sometimes um, uh, make sure there's a bit of competition b between the staff, and I think that's that's really healthy. Just uh, making sure that we um, yeah we get a bit of ex exercise in first of all, um, burn off a few of the, the team biscuits that we've been consuming in the office, and and then yeah, get on with um, get on with a bit of competition just to make sure we we're, we're still sharp. And yeah, they get nice and competitive. I think the the fire's still burning in plenty of the staff. Is that what you can expect when three former footballers are taking part? Yeah, I, I think so. I, th that's always going to be the case. And um, yeah, there's, uh, there is a, a, a feisty and, and healthy level of, of fierce competition, I think. Someone else you work with closely, is, obviously, is, is Richard Hughes. Something you joked about at a recent fans forum was how you can't really go a day without speaking to each other. Not sure if I'm going to get told off for mentioning that, but how much was, has he helped you move, move down here sort of in terms of settling in and, and finding your feet at the club as well? I think from the, from the moment that... Um, you know, the moment that I, I started speaking about the job, I knew how crucial Rich was going to be um, for, for many reasons. I think, first of all, uh, Rich has had that experience uh, working at a successful football club and, you know, he knows what it takes to, um, you know, to, 
to build sides. He knows what it takes to, um, to build promotion winning sides. And, and he's got a huge amount of experience that I think I can lean upon every day. And you know, we speak about anything and everything from um, you know, the, the sort of nuts and bolts of the job in terms of recruitment, coaching, culture, how we treat players, just, just do anything really and, and every, everything in, in general life. So, you know, we lean on each other a, a huge amount and I think our relationship, I knew that from a very, very um, early point, our relationship was going to be probably the most crucial in terms of um, you know, how the head coach works at this football club. And I think it's very, very different from the way football clubs maybe used to operate 20 years ago when I first started playing football and, and it's moved on for the better, I think. And um, I think what Rich does as well, and really well, is just takes a huge amount off my plate. So not in, just in terms of um, the sort of man hours that is put into recruitment, but everything and, and anything else um, around that just lets me focus on the football. So there's so much day to day that goes on at a football club that, that Rich can take off my hands and, and do it expertly and, and ultimately lead the team. Um, and he leads the team really well. And yeah, we do, we do work really closely. We're really, really intertwined. He's a big part of the, the coaching staff as well, always involved in the office. And um, yeah, I think there is very rarely a day goes by where we don't speak to each other. And, and if there is, one of us probably panics and just picks up the phone just to check everything's all right. You've been on the South Coast for well over a year now, as we have mentioned. I know you moved your family down here in the summer as well. So would you say you're all sort of fully settled in? Yeah, we we settled in really well. I, incredibly lucky that the um, my daughters are at a good age where they could just um, move school, and yeah, my my wife was really supportive in terms of I think realizing pretty early on when when she met me that uh, we'd, we'd already moved a couple of times from um, from moves in, in football I was, when I was a player, and I think yeah there was maybe a conversation early on in a relationship where she sort of said oh, it'll, be, it'll be nice when you retire because we'll be able to go away for Christmas and, and Easter, and yeah, at which point I, I sort of informed her that being a head coach or a manager means that it's probably even worse, and then uh, yeah she's been brilliant in that, fully supportive. It makes my life a lot easier the fact that I know that. Um, my wife and kids are, are really happy, moved down here and they've been welcomed by everybody in Portsmouth. That's been brilliant. And yeah, it's a really, really nice place to live. So um, that's, that's been a real positive of, of coming down here, settling in. It just it means I can do my job a lot better. Now, I know you won't have sort of much time, spare time from you know, being a head coach at, at Portsmouth Football Club. But would you say the time you do get away from the training ground is what's really allowed you sort of, to sort of immerse yourself in the city? I think so. It's been really important for for me actually living down here, and and, and you actually get to f get a feel for how passionate everybody is on the island for the football club, and it just becomes you know becomes bigger and bigger. I think every day when I when I walk down the street, we have conversations with um, with fans, uh, and yeah, they're you know they're they're really excited about what we're trying to do here, and that's great. It's it's brilliant to to have that, and um, yeah, I do I do feel that in and around the in and around the city, and I think that is a you know it is a really important part. I think of trying to immerse yourself in the football club. There would be no point in me living up in High Wycombe trying to um, pretend that I knew anything about what it was even like to, to live here and you know just on a, from a practical point of view as well it lets me work a bit more I can um, I can get in and a bit earlier in the morning so I can leave a bit later at night and I think that's all part of trying to be a successful f uh, head coach in, in football you need to make sure you, you've got that ability to put in the um, put in the work. Talking about your sort of management career over the last year what would you say are sort of some of the most important lessons you've learned about management if you had to pick a couple? I think that one of the, one of the most important lessons is that there's, there's very little that you can properly do to prepare for, for the role. I think, you can, um, I think the, the, the coaching badges are brilliant. Um, the pro license was as close as you can possibly get to speaking to people and learning as much as you possibly can about what it's like to take this leadership role. But there are so many things that pop up day to day that you, you just can't prepare for. And I think it's about being as um, I think fluid and um, adaptable as possible because um, you know, we, you're, dealing with, you're dealing with people and, and there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot that goes on in, in people's lives. And you're trying to improve people and that's a difficult thing as well. And, and ultimately you're trying to juggle um, you know, 150 different things um, on top of that as well, including trying to win football matches. So yeah, the biggest lesson I've learned, I think, is just to, is to make sure you can adapt quickly and, and, and not just to, you know, not to be too pig headed and think it's my way or the highway. I think there's, there's a lot to be said for making sure you're flexible and, and making sure you try and deal with people properly. And, and hopefully, you know, the, the way that we do things here, we, we're hopefully known for being able to do that. You've had a few high moments so far that we've spoken about multiple times. How much hunger does that give you to, to really push on, move forward and, and be successful? I think the highs and the lows both both inspire everybody at the at the football club because um, you know when you win games you see how fantastic it, it can be and and how elated the supporters are home and away and and the vibe that it does bring around the place and and that's true for what I'm saying about you know living in the living in the city when when we win a game it's a it's a nice place to it's a nice place to be and I can walk around and I don't have to wear my hat and when we lose a game I try and hide away because I know it's you know 
uh, it does, you know, it really, it really affects everybody day to day. And that's what football is all about, I think. And um, I think that's, that's the brilliant thing here is that it means so much to, to everybody at the football club, um, obviously to try and get out of this league and this, this massively important thing that everybody externally speaks about, of course, we completely get that. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that's a real, I think, inspiration to try and do as, as well as we possibly can. What's it going to take from everyone connected with the club, staff, players, fans and everyone else to really sort of push forward in this second half of the season? I think just a mammoth amount of effort and working, working hard, but working smart as well and making sure that we, we do the right things. We've put ourselves in a really good position. We've got a lot of work to do, a huge amount of work to do. I think we you know, we were in a, a bit of a better position just before Christmas, but um, you know, ultimately we didn't take advantage of that. So I think we've, you know, we've, we've gone through that, that blip and you know, we've got to make sure that we make it just a blip by going and producing results. And it's just going to take, I think, a huge amount of like, just effort. I think it's just effort and, and hard work. And that's in every single department. And that's all, all it is. I don't think you can really substitute from that. I've got, I think we've got to be good at what we do. Um, but I think if you have the, the basics and, and you try and underpin everything with, with just pure hard work, then I think you've got half a chance. And, and that's not just the, the, the players or the coaching department. It's every single department. It's everybody connected to the football club. And, and because we have that, sort of structure in place at the football club um, everything functions brilliantly well and, and we were able to do our job on the football pitch and I think that just goes for everybody that's employed here. Speaking of looking forward we're going to touch on the Port Vale match this weekend a chance to get back out on the pitch what will you take from that Fleetwood game into this one? I think we weren't spectacular in the Fleetwood game we played pretty well in the first half but we had to dig in and do it a different way in the second half and that was really pleasing because I thought we actually hadn't shown those characteristics against Leighton Orient we really dropped off. I thought we were too easy to play against. We didn't run as much as we needed to run. We didn't compete as much as we needed to compete and we were punished for it. So to be able to flip that in a week and, um, and actually get back on where we should have been is a bare minimum, to be fair. That was pleasing, but we need to kick on. We need to make sure that we don't congratulate ourselves, pat ourselves on the back after a 1-0 win and, and kick on again. We've got two tough away games and it's going to be really important that we, you know, we get together and, and, and yeah, really graft to try and win both of the games. Miles came in this week. How has he settled into the group? I think he settled in really well. I think it's helped that he worked with John previously and he knows a couple of the lads, I think, really well. So I think that's, that's really helped him, uh, helped him settle. And I think it's a good, a good dressing room, to be fair, to, to Marlon and the senior pros. They make it a really easy dressing room, I think, to come into, whether you come from um, a Premier League side or a non-league side. I don't think it makes a difference. So the lads are really welcoming, straight into training. It's settled in brilliantly. I think he's one of the advantages of com Miles coming in is that he's been involved in Premier League games this year. He played, I think, 90 minutes over the two cup ties that Brentford had against Wolves the other week. And so, yeah, he's coming in fresh and, and ready to go and, uh, you know, I think willing to step straight into first team action. Now, it wouldn't be an interview in January ahead of a match without me asking about the transfer window. So how are things progressing on that front? Yeah, I think things have started to move along a bit more across the entire transfer window. So not just for us, we obviously brought Miles in and Miles is a, a really good example of how earlier in the transfer window, we just wouldn't have been available. He wasn't available because he was playing for Brentford. He sat on the bench at the weekend for Brentford in the Premier League while we played up against Fleetwood. And that was part of it. We were, you know, we were hopeful of trying to get him in a bit earlier, but things just didn't happen. There were, there were so many factors, I think, including the Asia Cup, the AFCON, um, you know, even, even things like um, Ivan Tony coming back from suspension, which I, I don't know, I'm just speculating, but that might have, had a, might have had an impact in Brentford being able to let players go. So that's just a, one example of, I think, what all clubs are experiencing at the minute, which means that things have been a bit slow. I do think things are starting to happen now. Uh, and will do over the next seven, eight days. But I, there seems that there is plenty of time. There's a huge amount of time. A week in football is a long, long time. A week in the transfer window is a long, long time. And I, you know, I expect things to, to start moving. And I don't think anything's imminently going to happen before the weekend. But you know, next week, there is plenty of time to get some stuff done. Now, I'm going to finish on a quite a tough question for you. If you had to pick three words to summarise your first year in management, what would they be and why? <laughs> Uh, challenging. It's, it's the biggest challenge I think I've, I've ever faced. Um, so definitely challenging. Um, you know, every time anyone asks me about the job, I think the other word would be enjoyable. I absolutely love the job. It's, it's brilliant. I feel extremely privileged to work in this role and extremely privileged to work at this football club as well. Um, so what have I got? I've got challenging, enjoyable. Um, I, I think uh, the other word, I think exciting is the other word. It's definitely exciting. Um, the, the excitement builds when when we win games, um, it obviously drops when we lose games, but the, the excitement's there. I think everybody can feel that we're trying to achieve something this year. So uh, I, I think I'll go, with, I'll go with those. They I think they encapsulate everything really well.